In this video, we will cover the latest advancement in wing design for achieving maximum lift that are extremely promising for short and ultra short takeoff and landing aircraft. One of the benefits that electric aviation brings is the strong stall capability. In fact, ultra stall capability using distributive propulsion has already been demonstrated. Compared to eVTOL, where one normally ends up with a suboptimal solution either for vertical takeoff and landing phase or the cruise phase, a stall aircraft can be designed much more easily with a longer range that can fulfill many missions. Not only that, but stall and ultra stall aircraft are easier to certify as they don't fall in a new category of aircraft. For making a stall or ultra stall aircraft, wing needs to have very high lift coefficient. Lift coefficient of aircraft can be increased by two methods. The first involves adding aerodynamic surfaces called flaps and slats on the wings. The second method to increase the lift coefficient is the use of blown flaps, that is blowing prop wash over the wings to increase its lifting coefficient. As the prop wash speed can be much higher than the forward speed of the aircraft, high lift can be gained and by using multiple small propellers or in other words distributed propulsion high lift coefficient can be achieved over the whole span of the wing using either of these methods a lift coefficient value of 4 and over can be attained for reference a Cessna 172 has a lift coefficient of 1.6 so to sum up an aircraft can get more than twice the lift of a normal wing and this can result in significantly lower landing and takeoff distances or higher payload capacity. The use of slats and flaps has been the more popular method over the years for generating higher lift. Different types of flap configuration and leading edge slats have been used not only in larger passenger airliners, but also in smaller bush planes, for example, the CS-750 by Zenith Aircraft. Another example is the Antonov AN2. It has slats that are automatically deployed when the aircraft speed is below 40 miles per hour. This allows the aircraft to slow down and descend gently, similar to a parachute. Such is the capability of this aircraft that no stall speed has been listed for it. So the advantage of having a wing that has multi-elements, that is slats and flaps, is huge because it allows higher lift even at lower speeds. But let's unpack how does it work. It is well known that the higher the angle of attack, the higher is the lift coefficient. But the problem is that if the angle of attack increases beyond a certain point, the wing goes into a stall. The reason is that after the critical angle is passed, the airflow detaches from the wing and creates a huge region of turbulence behind the wing, leading to more drag force than lift. However, if slats on the leading edge are present, then they allow a higher angle of attack without stall because they inject more energetic air siphoned from the lower surface of the wing to the top surface, thereby delaying separation. Flaps similarly increase lift by pushing down the air at a higher angle. The goal is to push as much air down without inducing separation. Slotted flaps allow a higher coefficient of lift again by directing air from the bottom of the wing onto the top surface of the downstream flap. The use of multiple flaps could lead to a very high lift coefficient of 4.33 as was demonstrated by Hanley Page. Using this as an inspiration, Daniel Riley from the channel RC Test Flight came up with a very innovative wing design that allowed him to fly his RC aircraft at very low speeds thus proving its high lift coefficient. Recently, students from the Princeton University's BAM lab looked at the concept of covert flaps that was inspired from nature. They added flaps on the top surface of the wing rather than behind the trailing edge. These flaps deploy automatically when a wake region is created over the wing at low speeds. It was found that these flaps benefited the aerodynamic characteristics in two ways. First is the shear layer interaction that delays separation. The second is by acting as a pressure dam which prevents reverse flow going upstream over the wing. The result was an astonishing 50% improvement in lift and 30% reduction in drag. 
the covert flaps were not only tested in the wind tunnel but also on a model plane. Their presence allowed the use of a higher angle of attack without the aircraft going into a stall. All these developments are extremely promising for the new breed of e-stall aircraft. We have noticed though that the developing e-stall aircraft are only using the distributed propulsion blown lift method. The most prominent example of this is Electra Aero. Once completed, this aircraft will require just 45 meters or 150 feet of ground roll to take off. Perhaps a better solution would be to combine all the high lift technologies. This would mean the use of blown lift together with multi-element wings and with covert flaps. Just imagine the high lifting coefficient through the flaps of value four or higher enhanced further using distributed propulsion. And this has actually been demonstrated partially by the TVS-2MS modified Antonov AN-2 aircraft. The plane did a takeoff in just 6 seconds with 60 meters of runway. And with this, the video is concluded. If you learned something from it, then please do give it a thumbs up. Thank you for your attention.